Cue the music. I'm Calvin Michaels, and this is how I made my album, The Hardcover. The Hardcover is an album that's reflective of my journey and my experiences as a young man. It starts from around the age of 20 and carries into the present. So if you've had a chance to really listen to the album all the way through from beginning to end, you notice that the mood of the album shifts. In the beginning, it starts off very bright. It's very whimsical. The subject matter is very light. It's fun. You know, lots of party type tracks. And as you get further along into the album, the subject matter gets heavier. It's a little bit deeper. You're talking about death. You're talking about depression. You're talking about heartbreak. You're talking about just trying to figure out life and, and, and questioning why things are the way they are and, and, and finding your space within this realm of society that we all live in. And so the album gets deeper as you get further into it. And I purposely set it up that way because it's supposed to be reflective, like I said, of my life. It's like a life story, a journey of just my experiences from about age 20 to the present. Um, and with this album, the goal I had was I just wanted to be a little bit more vulnerable as an artist and I wanted to be very open. I think with my very first project, Symphonic Euphoria, it was kind of like you're getting your feet wet. I was so excited with the fact that I was just making an album that, you know, I, I put together a great collection of songs. Um, and I think those songs do till, they do still tell a story, but I think with this album, I was willing to be a little bit more open, w willing to be a bit more just transparent. And so I really put a lot of thought and effort into how I would lay out the album. Everything, the track listing, everything was done purposely. And, and even with the music, my goal was I wanted really big production. I wanted it to be very bright and I wanted it to almost be like Broadway to your ears. Like if you're somebody who likes to listen to music in headphones or you listen to the album in the car, when you put on that album, especially with some of the songs, you're being hit from all angles with just different background arrangements and different instruments and I really tried to make the album as lively as possible because I wanted to have a really long shelf life and so let's just talk about how I made the album let's talk about the tracks let's talk about the vision let's just talk about where we got started so initially I started the first initial recording sessions in January of 2018 which is kind of funny because Symphonic Euphoria had just come out that July of 2017 so really I got the itch to do another album about two months after I finished the first one. And I told myself, nope, at least wait till the new year. At least, at least get into 2018 and let the creative juices flow. And I didn't want to listen. So as soon as January of 2018 hit, I went straight in the studio. I put my studio back together and I started making all this music. And from January to March, I would say was the first phase of doing the album. And I probably did about 12 songs and I kept none of them. <laughs> I didn't like any of them. I don't know what I was going through, but literally every song was so mellow. Every song was right here. I don't know what I was going through, but everything was just so gloom and doom and heartbreak. And I'm, I'm done. And I was like, wait a minute. This, what are we going through here? Like, you know, life is actually pretty decent right now. This is actually a better space in life. What are we going through? And so I said, why don't we pause? Let's take a break and let's come back. So I took about a month off, and then around April, because maybe it must have been spring, it had to be weather or something, but um, something about that spring weather just it gave me some new energy. And so that's when the first half of the album started coming together. I started knocking out a lot of the up tempos and everything like that. And I did another phase in the summer, and then I thought I was done with the album. You know, um, it was about September, and I thought I had the material that I wanted with the album. And around November was my goal to release the album, November of 2018. And I was like, you know what? I don't think it's ready. And, and really what it was is I just, I listened to it and I compared it to my first album. And I was like, I think my first album is better. So no, it's not ready yet. So I went back to the drawing board and I mean, we, I, I worked on this thing until I had it right. And around April of 2019 is when I was like, okay, it's ready now. I have it right. I have all the tracks I want. I had everything is flowing the way I want and now I'm ready to put it out and then it came out in May. So let's go track by track. So the album starts with the song Structured Chaos and Structured Chaos is supposed to be the introduction into my young adulthood. That song is supposed to take place around the time that I'm age 20 and so the song is pretty much about just the ups and downs of dating when you first get an opportunity to date people but maybe it, it didn't go well or you're young you're naive you have all these high hopes and sometimes things don't really work out and you're also on your own journey and one of the cool things about the song is that it was actually three different songs that i put into one so if you listen to the song there's like a tempo change every 45 seconds and the music switches that's because there were three different songs initially so in the opening you hear 
a song that's very like or a track that's very high energy it's very high energy it, it sounds like it would be the intro to an album i was like okay cool and at the time i had been working on another track because i really loved the whole baltimore club new jersey club music sound i love that and so i was kind of working on the track with that but the track that i had i didn't like it as a full song by itself so i said you know let me come back to it and at the same time i had another song i actually had wrote years before i even did my first album um it was a song i wrote in maybe like 2013 and so i had the melody for that song and i was playing the chords and for some reason i was like it would be kind of cool if i merged these three songs into one and so pretty much structured chaos is exactly what it is. It's structured and it's chaotic. This is the album where I try to give a taste about the past. All the lessons and relationships I'm about to didn't last. On the gas, heavy foot, so she said I move too fast. Gonna crash in a place where there's nothing but the masses. Judging, she's up for the picture. She's been to the curb, she comes to the mist. Cut into the edges of the heart, I gotta find another victim. She dissed them, was good, and now she missed. Come on. <laughs> the next track is It Played Us. And It Played Us to me is definitely a standout on the album. I think all the songs are good, but that song in itself has had some serious legs like literally when I go and I look at the stats of the different songs and see you know which songs are performing well and which ones are, are kept just doing so-so on the album it played us is the only song that has had a star by it since the album came out that star would just not go away and, and like pretty much it's just a star that shows you that people are listening to it the most like people seem to really enjoy that song and I'm glad people took on to it it's a really fun song it's about pretty much when you meet somebody and you just want to have fun. You think you're just going to have fun. You think you have the self-control where you can do everything and not let your emotions get in the way. And guess what happens? You fall in love anyway. And so that was me at 21. You know, I, I got into this situation ship where, um, you know, I thought we were just going to be hanging out, chilling and, you know, have some fun and be on your merry way. And then, no, absolutely not. Like, we both caught feelings and we're like, OK, what do we do now? And so that's what the song is about. Like, you know, looks like we can't stop love. Is, is that what we're thinking? You know, well, what do we want to do here? Um, it was probably July. Maybe it might have even been June. And, you know, I, I just wanted to get the music right first. And so, because I had a few lyrics, but I didn't really have the song written out yet. Like, I just had, I knew the melody for the verses, or the first half of the verse, but there wasn't the pre-chorus yet, there wasn't the chorus, there wasn't the bridge. And so, I was on my keyboard one day, and I'm just playing with these little chords, and I was like, you know what? The song needs, like, some pads and strings, like some padded string um, synthesizers. I want that on there. And so that's where the chords started coming from. And I, I, I don't even know how I came up with the chords, but I was like, these chords sound so good. They sound so good. So the vocal that's on that, I need it to match that. So even though the verses are really, really funky and gritty, I, I want the pre-chorus and I want, you know, the part where these chords are playing, I want the vocal delivery to be a little different. So I had fun recording this one. With the vocals, there's lots of layered vocals on this one. A lot of them. It was torture trying to record them all because you're, you're singing in 15,000 different keys. But it's so much fun. And now we're blocking out the memories to try and keep us together. Let's call it a spade This game that we play Put us into another round The more that you say Don't push it away It's just the way these things are now Looks like we can't stop love Is that what we think it is? It's all laid out for us The dance on us again the hook happened on accident. It wasn't even supposed to happen the way it was. Like, I already had the idea of the, you know, there's a line where it's like, looks like we can't stop love. Is that what we were thinking? That was the main course. But there's a part where, in the undertone, you hear like, a, get the lust that played us, get the lust that played us. And so that wasn't supposed to be in there. I was just kind of playing around on the microphone, and I just never took it off, because I was like, actually, I kind of like it, so it can stay there. Because I was like, that kind of fits with the song, too. Get the lust, it played us. You know, there was the lustful act of being in this situationship, and then that lust has turned into love. So I was like, keep it in there. And then I was randomly in my car. The Brothers Johnson are one of my favorite groups from the 70s, and they have a song called I'll Be Good To You. And for some reason, the I'll Be Good To You, just it was just in my head. I was like, hmm, let's pay homage to them too. So I put that in there. And then, you know, with the bridge, there's like a breakdown where you hear a lot of sound effects. I just pretty much went to the mic, 
And I think I got that because I was listening to Michael Jackson's Get On The Floor. And I always liked that with Michael is very vocal in his music. So he does the music, but he likes to make a lot of sound effects and beatboxing and just random sound effects. And I was like, well, I kind of like to do that too. And so that's how the song, it just came together and, and it worked. Then I knew that that had to be the second or third song on the album. It just had to be in the front. It almost was going to be the opening of the album, but I had already liked what I did with Structured Chaos. And so I was like, okay, we're going to keep it. So um, It Played Us is definitely a favorite. Serenity is a really fun song. It's actually one of the last songs that was added to the album. I think I recorded Serenity, or I, I at least completed Serenity around... Wow. Um, Serenity, I think I recorded in March of 2019, so pretty much an entire year after I started the project. It was one of the very last songs added to the album, because at the time I needed some more up temples, um, and so that's how it came on there. And really, it's a fun song because I have four different drum patterns playing at the same time. What I like to do when I make, I guess, my, my drum loops, because I make everything by hand. I don't like to, you know, I use Pro Tools when I make my album, and you know, a lot of the software already give you loops and stuff that you can use and, and build on. I don't like to use anything. I like to do everything by hand. And with this one, I pretty much built the drums around just some random sound effects I made. So, just here's pretty much how I did it. So, in the beginning, all I had was this. I don't know if you can hear it or not. That's literally all I had, right? Then I added some drums. But you gotta keep building. And then I also love to use like different vocal techniques and stuff with the music. So if you listen, you almost hear like a whistle sound like a dum 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 Literally, I was just blowing into the mic, but in like a light whistle where it's like Like I literally put that in there and then you put in all the different sound effects. And so I wanted this song to just be a really light and a fun song. And the song is just all about, you know, finding your inner peace, not letting other people's viewpoints or the naysayers really get under your skin and bother you. Just learning to, you know, cut things off that you don't need. So people that are smiling in your face, you gotta cut. Goodbye, you know. You know, the weight that you carry from place to place, sometimes you gotta cut it off. And so Serenity, it's just a fun song. It's um, very high energy. It kind of reminds me of some of the R&B songs that came out around like 2006, 2007. It's just, it's a fun track. It's a track where it's just a feel good track. My goal in the first half of this album was just to make you feel good. Make you want to kind of shake your shoulder, bop your head a bit, make you party. And, and the other thing is I love up temples. I really like up temples. I wish more artists would do them again. And so I really wanted to just put a lot of different up temples on this album and try to give you different kinds of up temples. So all of the up temples have a different vibe. None of them sound the same in my opinion. I think I, I kind of went for a different sound with each one. So Serenity is a really fun track. Oh, what you gonna say with the hurdles in your way? All the baggage dropping off cause you got to tell oh, what you gonna say with the hurdles in your way? All the baggage dropping off cause you got to tell oh, what you gonna say with the hurdles in your way? All the baggage dropping off cause you got to tell Friendzone. Friendzone is another song that was kind of recorded towards the end of the album. Like I said, I initially had a version of the album in about around November of 2018 and I was like, you know, it's missing some stuff. Where is like the grit and the songs that really just kind of keep your head bopping? And so that's how like Serenity and Friendzone and the Strip Interlude and even Black Plight came into fruition. Just wanting to have some more songs that kind of makes you like, oh, Okay, uh. and so friend zone uh, is it, I swear that's my homage to Prince. Like I just it, I had Prince in my head as I was making it. Um, I just wanted something where it just was hard hitting, some really hard hitting drums, some sound effects, not too many chords, just really just the sound effects carry the song, and then you let the vocals carry it. And so it's a fun song. Um, 
And the song is pretty self-explanatory. You know, you got a friend that you, you pretty much like, but they're not checking for you and vice versa. And the song can be looked at from the perspective of either person. Either it can be for the person who has the crush on the person that isn't paying them any attention, or it's the person who isn't paying any attention to the friend that has, you know, the crush on them. And so it's like, listen, that zone, it just ate up your friend. And, you know, what it is that you have, they want really bad for some reason. And so that's a fun song. And there were two or three different versions of that song as well. Initially, the way that the bridge is set up on the, the version that came out on the album, that wasn't on there. The song never had a tempo change. It stayed where it was upbeat the whole time. kind of I like this song but it's getting repetitive or it's getting redundant or I'm getting bored with it even though I like it so and so it was almost in danger of not making the album because I was like I don't know if I like this there was another song I had called Family Affair that I really wanted to keep on the album but I just I did was the album was already too long and so it was between Family Affair and Friend Zone and the only reason Friend Zone made the cut was because I changed the bridge and I think the bridge just enhanced the song a lot more but Friend Zone is a fun song um, it's also a favorite by fans. I see that with the numbers and with how many people play it as well. So I'm glad people are liking that song as well. The strip is an interlude that was put together in the very last phase of me putting together the album. It's another one of the very last tracks that was added on. I think it was actually the second to the last track that made the album. Because initially I had a totally different, well there was two interludes I had in mind. One, because I'm a big fan of Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and what they've done with Janet Jackson, I had made pretty much a, a tribute to some of the things that they've done production wise and it was an interlude and then I was like man by the time I get through the laws of licensing and, and copyright it ain't even gonna be worth it so I, I just pulled it off um, and so then here came the strip and it's so funny because with the strip I literally put the song together in 30 minutes I was just playing around with the drum kit and just kind of playing some stuff and I had like a minute and a half of this beat that I just randomly threw together and I was like hmm Let's rap over it, because I don't think, yeah, I was like, we got enough singing in here. Let's throw a rap song in here, because I like to rap on occasion. I don't consider myself a rapper, but I can spit bars on occasion. And so the strip is pretty much about stepping outside of what society tells you is normal and just enjoying your space, enjoying your livelihood and just living. Um, one of the funniest things that used to crack me up when I was younger is like my friends used to always hate riding in my car because I play exactly what it is I want to listen to. And I love to listen to like 70s funk and R&B tracks from the 80s and 90s and early 2000s. And of course, everybody really likes trap music. So I had this one friend that said one time like, man, you, I don't like riding in your car because you play all this like musical stuff. It's just musical. And I said, huh? And so that's what inspired the opening verse where it's like, they said they couldn't ride to the music because it's way too melodic. They despise anything that makes your ears feel erotic. I'm like, yeah, that's true. Folks just be hating. And so the song is kind of bipolar. So it just kind of tackles a bunch of different things. So it, start, it starts off talking about, you know, just the whole element of music. But then it goes into addressing the fact that we live for the justifications of other people as far as getting validation from other folks. And I'm trying to challenge that and say, you know what? Step outside of the box, you know, step into another dimension and focus on the things that make you happy. Like, just choose to live life. Don't try to matriculate through society by the standards and means of what everybody thinks you're supposed to do because that's what they're doing. Because sometimes your journey isn't theirs. And so that's what that interlude is about. And so I tried to pack in as much as I could in that minute and 10 seconds and um, really just put it out there. And it's a fun track. People seem to really like that track as well, which is really cool. So that's the strip. Stepping out on the weekend as the crew is routine Cause they act up, fall back up and all the girls are mad up The DJ spins the record and the lines begin to stack up Take a step into another deeper dimension While you balance out the moments that you give your attention Set, when you such an actor, taking pictures faster Seeking validation from the ones you used to laugh at Wait, here's a question that they never really ask us 
Do For Love is a really, really fun song. You know, it's a song, it's really high energy, it's up-tempo, like even just the opening. I, I wanted to really make sure that it just thumped. And so my goal with this song though, I was trying to find a way to somehow merge the sound of New Jack Swing and have it meet the sound of House, but also meet the same element of what the Minneapolis sound was. So it was like three different sounds I tried to piece together and, and, and create. Like, you know, I, I love to blend different sounds. So one of the jokes that's in the song, if you listen, you hear me talking to myself on the song, like with just in different characters, and I'm talking about is this a house song, or is this New Jack Swing, or is this Minneapolis, or is this Teddy Riley, or is this Prince, or Rick James, what is this? And so, you know, that's pretty much what the song does. Like if you listen to it, some moments it sounds like it's a New Jack Swing song, and then there's some moments where it has essence of house music, So, because I, I really enjoy house music. House music is really fun. It's a really up tempo bright type of sound that really just makes you always want to dance and so that's where the music inspiration came from um this was also one of the first songs that came about after i took that first creative break like when i talked about having a hard time coming up with ideas and then i took the break this was one of the first songs that came out of that break um and i really really enjoyed making it i love the hook i absolutely love how i made the hook um and again lots of Layering the vocals to get that hook right. It, it was a lot, um, but it's fun. And I like that I challenged myself vocally to kind of do a little bit more. So there's a lot more singing out on that song. And it's just fun, it makes you want to dance. And the song has like a bunch of mood swings. The verse starts one way, and then the pre-chorus comes one way, the music shifts, it changes. I had a lot of fun, even like with the second verse. One of the things I did on this album with a lot of the songs is I tried to make sure that I keep the song interesting. So a lot of the songs, the verses would be sang differently. So you sing the first verse one way, but by the time you get to the second verse, it's delivered in a different style. Um, on It Played Us, the, the second verse, is, the, the melody is different from the first verse. The same thing for Serenity, the same thing for Friend Zone, the same thing for Do For Love, um, Heat The Flame, same thing, um, Addicted, uh, Tenacity, Frequency, I'm trying to think of all my songs. Can I come through? Like they all, the, the second verse is always delivered differently than the first. And I did that on purpose. You know, I just did that to kind of make sure that you don't get bored and you keep the song just energized. And so that's Do For Love. My dreams will take this past the moon. Are you down the ride? The music changes the mood. And I'm on the same page and we're talking about it. Cause when it comes down to the world, I'm gonna have to get myself a little to look and stand up. The Code is another song that came out of that creative break that I took. It's one of the earlier tracks for the album. I initially had like, it took me forever to write for that song. It was really hard because I didn't know what to do with it. I just had the track. I had the little the bass line, and, and the bass line pretty much again, it's funny because some of the songs were inspired from the same songs that inspired songs from the first album. And so I remember talking about making this song called The Edge on Symphonic Euphoria, and it came from listening to LL Cool J's Phenomenon. And again, I was listening to LL Cool J's Phenomenon, and I was like, I still, I don't think I got it right the first time. I need to try it again. I just need a song where there's a bass line that just pulls you in and it complements the drums. And so that's where the do 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 Like you did that and then of course I live in DC. I love DC because DC has live instruments with everything, especially in go-go music. I don't consider the code to be a go-go song, but it's paying homage to the just the idea of live instruments. So there's a brass section, you know, there's horns, there's a saxophone. You know, there's lots of percussion. It's a very bright song. Um, and I had a lot of fun making the song once I finally figured out what to do with it. Because I had the music for the longest, but I didn't have words. I didn't know where to go with it or how to create a melody because it was like, how do you compete against horns? <laughs> how do you compete against a big bright, bah! you know, how do you com compete against that um, and, and, and not have it end up just sounding like a bunch of noise? So it took a minute, but the song is about, you know, Taking, account taking accountability when you have faults within your relationship. And so 
I knew someone that just used to like man, they had such a good girl, such a good woman they were with. And they kept messing it up, just doing dumb things like constantly stepping out and and go, you know, we hang out and they trying to talk to 15 different women at the same time. Like, what are you doing? And so that's where the idea of like the cold came from. Um, and it's so funny because when I was naming the songs, like even with Do For Love, Do For Love was supposed to be called The Wire, but I was like, I have too many songs that have the word the, because it's like the friend zone, or I think I took the out of the friend zone, but it was like the strip, you know, the code, the affirmation, the hardcover, the way it goes. I was like, too many thes, get rid of, get rid of it. And so I was like, okay, well we can keep the code. But, you know, because I think sometimes as men, we have like this whole thing of like a cold where it's like, we just don't say no, we be cool, you know, we be homies. And I'm like, I get that, but that's messed up. Like, a girl likes you a lot and will do anything for you and you stepping out. Why? And you're messing up a good thing. And then, you know, the idea of like, as you get older, that gets old. You know, you're trying to pull every woman off the block gets old real quick. And eventually you want to start settling down to having something that's more substantial. So that's what that song is about. Like, not messing up a good thing because you're, you're out here chasing something that's old. You're out here chasing something that's not going to give you fulfillment. And so that's what the code is about. Knees and eagles on the front line, looking for a good time. No shame. They don't want you to see love. that bridge. See love. Heat the Flame, where do I start? You know, Heat the Flame is one of my favorite songs on the album musically. Like, one of the things I really wanted to do on the album as well is I wanted the music to be so good that the music didn't even need words or a melody. Like, literally, you could make a, the album could be one big instrumental and it would still knock. So that was the goal initially with the music. So I wanted to make sure every song musically just took you somewhere. And I definitely think Heat the Flame does that musically. And then of course, like, you know, with the album, like I said, the initial stages were getting the music and then I'd like to do the words and do the melody and record the vocals. And so Heat the Flame, my goal was, I wanted a song that would be like, something you could play at the World Cup or at the Olympics. I wanted something that had like a global, appeal and I wanted it to still kind of be me though so I was like you know let's find a way to kind of have like afro beat meets world music meets house music and so what I did was I was like the music will have a very afro beat world music type vibe but the vocal delivery will kind of come from the element of like what they do in house music where you know you have this really banging track musically that's just really thumping but then the vocals that come on it are very like hard hitting like they're going and they're, they're just big and um energetic you know and so in my head i was picturing like somebody like a martha washer somebody singing the actual song and so with the song i wanted to really like just sing out a lot more because at this point in the album i was like okay now you gotta actually start putting some vocals in here because we can party all day but people eventually want to hear some like singing singing and so on that one, it's like I'm singing in chest voice for most of the song, which I don't do often. I don't like singing out of my chest voice or, you know, I like to kind of stay in my nice little cute pocket that I stay in. So on that song is one of the ones where you see me like really trying to pull out. Um, and so it's just fun. And, and the song is all about like just, you know, the promise of getting into a really great relationship. Like, you know, we're like whatchamacallit, we're vibing, so let's go ahead and make this a whole thing. Let, let, let me talk about what, what we can end up doing and what this can become. And so that's what that song is. And again, like musically, it's just a lot of fun. And it was so funny, cause look, I think Black Panther came out, so I was already in Wakanda mode while I was making the music. And so that was a fun one to make. Like the drums alone, I think I did on 19 different tracks. Cause like I said, I was playing like different drums on top of each other and, and adding pieces and adding bits. And one of the things I do, like I said, I don't always just use what's in the software. I will go and get like a random item off the coffee table and, and bang it into the mic and piece it together. Like I, I'll make it work. Like I, I just need whatever I have to just kind of fit the sounds and, and piece together what it is that I'm going for. I started initially with just this here. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's just some random sound effects I was doing. And then I started adding some more. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a bass line. Then I added some drums and then more drums.
explain, it was a, I had so much fun recording it. And it was one of the easier ones to record, actually. Um, it was hard to mix, but um, recording it was a lot of fun. It, it was a really fun one. And I love that the song builds. I love the ending of the song. Like by the time it gets into that guitar riff again, I use a lot of guitars and I use a lot of organs on this album for some reason. But I love how the song ends, how it's just, it just, it makes you wanna dance the whole time. And it just keeps building and building. And I like what I did with the second verse um, because the second verse is so different from the first. Um, so I was like, okay, kudos. I had to pat myself on the back for Heat the Flame. That's one of my favorites on the album. is Black Plight. And Black Plight is actually, again, one of the later songs that came um, on the album. I think I recorded Black Plight around February or March of 2019. And initially, it was actually a full song, but it was very different from what you guys hear on the album. Initially, the part that you hear is really what the bridge was of the full song. The full song um, was this song where I sang the verses in falsetto the entire time. And then, you know, the chorus, you kind of hear that part on this part where it's like the, the lookout we're coming through part. Um, that was still there. And then the bridge would have been where you see me like singing the actual bridge. Like as soon as the song starts on the album, you hear me start singing. That was the bridge. Um, I didn't keep the full song because one, the album, like I said, was already getting too long. And two, I just, I didn't quite like how the song sounded. The only part of the song I liked was the bridge, which is, which ended up being the part you guys hear on the interlude. Um, I love the music arrangement that I did, but I got bored with it, and I was like, and then even with the whole falsetto verses, I was like, uh, uh, I don't know if I like it, and so I, I was like, yeah, so I, I, I scratched it, and I was like, okay, why don't we do this, I'll take the bridge, I'm gonna revamp the music a little bit and build it around this bridge and make this an interlude. <laughs> One of those songs that just kind of supposed to kind of just motivate you so that's what it's about you know they try and say we won't make it critics we don't care and so black plight's a really fun song that one is really inspired from like a whole michael jackson vibe as far as like the vocal arrangements not even just in the singing but just even in the music um that song is very heavy with the actual bass line in the riff where you hear like the doom 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 but then in the background you hear like like this random sound effects you know and so that's black plight you know really really fun song track is Rustin Way. When I tell you Rustin Way almost didn't make the album, we were going through it trying to get that song done because it's, it's hard to get <laughs> people on the album when they don't live in the same state. So just as some background, Rustin Way is a place outside of Tacoma, Washington and it was one of my favorite places when I lived in Washington State. I just loved it because it was, it was by the water. It was, it was just a really nice place to go to. It used to calm my nerves and then on the weekends at night it was kind of a spot that was kind of jumping. And so I initially, the music, I just kind of was playing around. You know, it, I didn't think I was gonna make this track that would go on the album. A lot of the times, some of the songs that make the albums happen on accident. I Sometimes I'll just get up and say, oh, I want to do some music today. I'm just playing around and then it turns into something. And so I wrote this song or I wrote this, you know, I made the music and I was like, hmm, this is interesting, but I don't know if it fits with the album. This is this is like real hip hop here. Like I'm, 
And I was like, because clearly I'm not going to sing over this, but I could rap over this. This would be fun. And so I kind of wrote a little verse here and there. And I was like, okay, this is cool, but I don't want to rap a full song by myself on this. I was like, I think, let's bring some friends in on it. So I was like, you know what? Let's go and revisit how we did the last project. So of course, you know, I get my friend Whitney. She's on the first album. If you have some Phonic Euphoria, that's the voice you hear at the beginning and the end of the album. And I was like, Whitney, you want to rap? Come rap on this song. And so... One, it took her forever to come and rap because she's busy, so, um, you know, trying to get her part. So we, we got her piece done. <laughs> I want to give her a drink. I got song to drink. Okay, I'm focused. I swear. Focus, man. Tell, Tell about the holiday, holiday man. man. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all hold me. You heard <laughs> And then I'm trying to map this out. Like, I think, I don't remember when we recorded um, Rust and Wade, but it definitely was after 20. 18. So it was sometime in 2019. So I, I had made the music in 2018. And I also wanted my cousin Brandon on it. The rocks lead the knot. Be the rocks. We lead the knot. And we crack it. Yeah. <laughs> I had it right. What percentage is getting cut down right <laughs> I was doing this 30, 30, 30. Back to 22. We lead the knot. And Brandon, I think initially I was trying to get him to come around like October of 2018, but he was busy. He couldn't get there. And so we kept pushing back and pushing back because I had recorded my part. Whitney had recorded hers around January. And I think Brandon came either January or February. Finally got him on his part. And so I was like, finally. So like it was a lot of work, but we got it all in. And it was actually the easiest song to record because at least with rapping, you don't have to worry about being in key or fixing late. Like it's just, just spit the bars and call it a day. And so it was one of the easier songs to record. The hardest bit was just getting everybody there to record it. I kind of wish we could have been in the studio together all doing it because we would have vibed a bit better because all three of us run together anyway. But um, it is what it is. But I, I really enjoy the song. It's fun. Um, and it's just one of those like self-empowerment songs where you're just kind of rapping about, you know, how you're just able to matriculate in society. And like, so what I told everybody on the song was like, just write a song, write a verse about yourself and introduce yourself to the, your audience, pretty much. And just make it fun. And make it something that would make people want to kind of dance and bop their heads. And so that's what the song is about. And I had a lot of fun with it. I call the shots. Be my scope circulating your thoughts. Yeah, the small guy is saying a lot. Not afraid to push the envelope while taking the stairs. Had to skip the elevator, folks are waiting on theirs. Cause if nobody's gonna stop and start the things I can do. Said you take a number, make you wonder. Many questions, no clues. Got two albums, wrote a movie. Tell a joke and they counted two. Did it all on a Monday. Shoot my shots and it threw. Send it on. Be the rocks. Be the not. And then there's the feel good interlude. One of the things I like doing when I do these projects is I love to include people who are important to me on them. So I always include like my cousin Brandon or my friend Whitney. And then um, my friend Tanae was on this track. Some people thought that it was the same girl on Rustin Way and Feel Good. I was like, nope, two different people. And so Tanae, if you have the first album, she's on the song. Destiny, it was an interlude. So I was like, oh, well, Tanime, I always call her Tanime. We used to have this joke that like I was Mike Turner. And so because her name was Tanae, I'm gonna call her Tanime. And so she was my Mike at, just, just silly. Feel good. That's your key. Oh, that isn't helpful at all. <laughs> and so, um, I was like, listen, I want you on this song. Like, and when I tell you Feel Good was a really weird one to write because it sounds nothing like what you heard on the album. We went back and we did that song four or five times, just the music. She had already wrote the melody because that was the thing, like she wrote that song. All I did was the music. But, you know, she had already wrote her melody to a song that I, I made and it didn't have as many chords and pianos. It was really just like a drum kind of bit. And it just, it sounded a lot different. And so we had recorded the version and it was cool and I thought it was locked in and then I was like, you know what, at this point in the album I had already recorded some of the other songs like Addicted and Affirmation and I think I just did the song called Tenacity so I was like, man, those songs are really, really strong. I don't want people to not make it to that song because they turn the album off because this track isn't strong enough. So I went back and I redid the track like three or four different times. And I would, and Tanae doesn't live here anymore. So, you know, I'd have to like record the song and, and, and save it and send it to him. Like, how do you like how that sounds? She's like, no, I don't like that. Okay, let me go back and do the music again. And then eventually I got the music right. And 
the inspiration behind the music was I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to go the Rich Harrison route and build the song. Let the song start off funky, really gritty, but I want the chords to smooth the song out and I want there to be a nice melody by the time it ends, like some nice piano chords, you know, some nice strings, maybe a few little DJ scratches, but I want it to start off very just like hard hitting, but I want it to end on a smooth note. And so that's what really made the song you know, Kit, because Tanae has a beautiful voice, like, so, you know, she can make anything sound good, so I was like, okay, I want to make sure the music complements what she's doing vocally, and so once I found that, I was like, okay, well, good, I just wanted the music to match what she was giving, and so it came out really, really good, I almost wish I made that a full song, because I, I love the music arrangement on it. Addicted is a really special song to me. It's a song where my goal was, let's merge the sound of the 1980s and merge it with the 90s and somehow make it sound current. And so it has a very throwback vibe. And this is a song where I pieced together a lot of ideas from different artists. Like I, I just remember I was listening to different songs and somehow I just made this concoction of a song that has influenced by so many artists. So first, let me just name all of the songs that are inspired in this track. So one, the obvious would be Slick Rick, the song Mona Lisa. That's kind of where the drums are inspired by. And so that was the main part. And then as the song kicks in, you kind of hear like a shoot, do, do, shoot, do, do, do. And so with that, I'm kind of a music dork and I have a lot of playlists where I take live performances and put it on you know, my little playlist and ride to it and pretend I'm at the concert. And so I absolutely love what Janet Jackson had did with the live version of her song Because of Love. And so I used the background arrangements that the background vocalist had pieced together on the live version of Because of Love from the Janet tour back in like 93. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna use that piece. And then I was like, I wanna add some more. So then I, there was like an element of Boys to Men, Motown Philly with the dum dum da da. And then TLC's Ain't Too Proud to Beg, where you hear the Ain't Too Proud to Beg. And then you hear Jean Nays, um, Hey Mr. DJ with the Hey Mr. DJ. And so there's that, there's In Vogue, Never Gonna Get It, you hear um, a, you're never gonna get it, There's that's in there. There's a LL Cool J, Round the Way Girl, where there's like a round the way girl. Um, there is, I know I'm skipping some Outkast, Rosa Parks, In the Hook, you hear like the uh-huh, yeah, yeah, baby, like that piece is in there. Um, I know I'm skipping some bits, but I just had a bunch of songs that I really enjoyed growing up, and I was like, you know what, let's piece them together and put it all in there. Hey, yeah. It's a fun song and it's a, it's really simple too as far as like just the idea behind it. It's just kind of saying like, you know, it's just all about I enjoy spending time with you. I'm addicted to your personality. I'm addicted addicted to everything that you have. You know, let's just, you know, we, we chilling. And so that's pretty much the, the gist of the song, but I really enjoyed the production. It was a lot of fun. I love the strings that I put on it. Um, it's very, I think it's one of, I think it's probably the second most um, popular song on the album. I remember I recorded that in the summer of 2018. It's one of the earlier songs on the album as well. Um, and I just knew it was gonna be a special one. And that one's funny too, cause it totally had a totally different theme and everything else. There was another song with that same track and it was called, um, I don't remember what it was called, but it was it was pretty much about like friendships that you have and how at the end of the day, we still gonna ride together, you know, through, through thick and thin. And then I kind of changed it around. I was like, actually, yeah, I got a different idea for the song. And so that's how it came. One of the cool things I wish I could pull off is getting Slick Rick to do a remix. I would absolutely love that to happen. I think that would be really dope. Baby, get the keys and go.
The next track is Transparency, and Transparency is an interlude on the album, and it's also what I like to call the gateway into the second half of the album. So the first half, everything before Transparency, were all of the up temples, all the party tracks, everything was fun. Really, this could have just been a double album with two sides. Like, you know, the first half would have been, you know, one part of the album, all the fun party songs, and then from Transparency onward, or maybe even Addicted onward, would be the second half of the album where the substance gets a little bit heavier, and then even just the production sounds a lot different. So Transparency is very, very simple. It's just strings. It's strings and a harp and a saxophone, and that's literally it. And so I just wanted a song to kind of bring everything down. Because we party, we, we, we didn't been to the World Cup, we didn't been to the Go-Go Club, we didn't been to the Laser Rave party, we didn't did everything. And so now it's like, okay, let's bring the album home and let, let, let's let everything simmer now. Like, you've, you've seen my party side, you've seen that we can have a good time, but now let's talk substance. Let's, let's, let's elevate the vocals a bit, let's really sing about a bunch of different things. And so that's what that track is. It's supposed to just kind of calm everything down and bring it back in. And it's funny because Transparency was actually um, pretty much, it was supposed to be the intro to the song, The Affirmation. And I was like, I think it's gonna be too long and people are gonna miss it and they're gonna skip the track and not realize that, you know, the song Affirmation would come in. Because initially, Affirmation was just one big long track and Transparency was the opening. And I was like, actually, let's separate it. And so I, I did that. And so that's where the strings and everything come from. And so that's Transparency. And this next song is The Affirmation. The Affirmation is one of the songs where I was like, I wanted to have a very live vibe, like live instrument. Um, one of my favorite, 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 favorite songs is the brand new heavies Never Stop. I love how the song just, even though that song is like 30 years old at this point, or close to 30 years old, it just sounds so fresh every time you hear it. And I, that's one of the gifts of when you use live instruments. The song, the song can never sound old or sound dated because live instruments just, there's a life to it as opposed to things that may be programmed. So with the affirmation, I wanted it to just have a lively feel. And it was inspired by a few songs. It was inspired by the brand new heavies, Never Stop. Um, as far as the swing beat with the drums, it was inspired by TLC's Creek. And it was also inspired by Janelle Monae's Electric Lady. Um, Cause I just, I just like the vibe of all those songs. So I was like, I want a song that just has a smooth vibe and it's jazzy, it's fun. It's just very bright and so, the song is pretty self-explanatory, just the affirmation, like life is great and it's going to be exactly what I make it and so I'm going to step out and I'm going to go and be great and as life is good I'm going to embrace and live in all of the moments and so it's a bright song, I love the music, I, I, I wrote and I think the affirmation was one of the earliest songs on the album as well, um, I recorded that in the summer of 2018 and the hook is inspired by MC Light's Ice Cream Dream. If you've heard that song, it's a very similar melody. So I was inspired by MC Light's Ice Cream Dream. And, you know, the affirmation is just a fun, fun song. Now, people were asking me, they are like, do you have a, a daughter or a baby? Because we are a baby at the end of the song. I was like, no, that's my goddaughter. I don't have any kids yet. But um, I definitely wanted her to be on the song. So I was like, you know what, let me just find a way to just get her on the song. So, you know, they came over. And that's actually her father playing with her in the background. That's not me playing with her. So um, it's kind of cool, though, my little goddaughter. I was like, so just in case I ever amount to something or become famous or maybe the album catches on 10 years from now and starts making some money, that's, that, the royalties can go to her college fund. See, I was already thinking ahead of the box. But the affirmation is it's a fun, fun song. Um, and I just love, I just wanted it to feel like you were at a live show. And so there's like the music breaks and I, I really enjoyed how I did the vocal arrangements on that as well. She's followed my life, leaving me dancing. So happy about love the way I feel. It's so surreal, oh so real. 
And again, like I said, how you kind of give a different delivery with the verses, the second verse is delivered very differently from the first verse. And I, I really, really enjoy the song. It's a favorite. It's a song I think will probably have the longest shelf life on the album. It's just, it's a really great track. So that's the affirmation. Jaded View, Jaded Blue. This is when the album starts to shift. We ain't happy no more. <laughs> Life has hit us, all right? And because like I said at the beginning of this video, you know, this album is a story of my life as I keep getting older. And at this point, I'm no longer 20 years old and life is not just a party and I don't feel invincible anymore. Life has kicked me in behind and I've lived and I've seen some things. And so that's what inspired this song. And it's funny because the whole idea of just even the word jaded, I was in my car, again, I was randomly listening to Aerosmith. They have a song called Jaded that I really like. It came out when I was in middle school. And so the word Jaded was just in my head all day. And I was like, you know what? I could write a song to this because I had the, the initial track, like the music to Jaded, Jaded View, Jaded Blue was one of the early, early, early tracks for the album. I think I recorded that music in like April of 2018. Like I, that was one of the early, early tracks and I just, it sat there and then I didn't come back to it until probably November, December of 2018. And so I didn't know what to do with it. I knew I was probably gonna rap on it um, and maybe do a little bit of singing. And so I was like, this song just has a gloom and doom kind of vibe to it. So I think let's talk about what's going on in life. And so that's where the song goes. It talks about like, you know, the first verse, it's, it's three different stories. The first verse is a story about somebody who pretty much, they're feeling down and out. The relationship they're in is over with. And that's pretty much where I was at um, in my earlier years, but I was kind of reflecting on how I felt at the time, where like there's a relationship that was over, and there's a line where it's like, now you're like on the couch in the dark, wishing that you felt the way that you did back in March. That's kind of like that idea of like, sometimes, you know, if you've ever gone through a breakup, you absolutely hate how it feels if it didn't end in a good way. Like, because you just, you can't control your emotions and you, no matter how much you wanna move on, your emotions and your heart won't let you do it. And you're like, man, so you just be stressed out, laid up in the dark with the blinds closed. So that's what that part is about. And then the second verse is all about, and again, the first verse is just about life in general, like dealing with depression and dealing with the, the, the effects of a breakup and recognizing that there's a relationship that you thought you could kind of get your way back into and it's over with. That's the first verse. The second verse is about, you know, the experiences of just pretty much being a black man or even a black woman in the workplace. They tell me this is life. You're working just to manage all the overpriced. Mental hikes, told your car, you're on your bike, pushing to work in the rain. There's a puddle as you move to the right, a bigger car splashes on you got mud on your clothes. Now you're trekking the road, trying to make it home and change before you clock and then go to the job where you're disrespected from all your peers. Smartest in the room, but never climb because of their fears. Watching all the mediocrity and title promotions. HR flies under the email, they don't like how you wrote it. Now, a mediation, conversation, improvement plan. They expect you at the potluck with the folks you can't stand. You got a dream, but no dollar because you're paying the rent. Spending even on your craft, missing social events. In the downtime, you're catching up on all of your sleep, getting ready for another run. The cycle repeats. I think I. And sometimes people looking down on you and thinking that you are not able to do the work that's put before you when in reality you're the smartest one in the office. But because of the way that things may be set up sometimes, people don't want to give you an opportunity. Or people think you're too opinionated or you're too bold or, or you got too much, you're too emotional or whatever it is. And people don't want to give you that opportunity. And then at the same time, whatever corporation you work for, they still want you to go to the company Christmas party and the potluck. And, you know, and so there's that. And just, you know, that's just about having a really crappy day. And then after how horrible your day is, you got to go to work with the folks that you don't even like being around. Like, that's what that verse is about. And then the third verse 
is just about pretty much police brutality and, and the experience of being black in America and seeing people who look like you constantly be shot and killed and then even though you see all of the evidence right before you, people try to tell you otherwise and say, oh no, that's not how it really happened or you have it all warped or you're the one being racist because you keep bringing it up. So that's what that song is about. So it's called Jaded View, Jaded Blue and, and the hook is just saying, you know, I'm trying to be great here, but every time I turn around, it's some more nonsense. So I can't really change my viewpoint right now. Sometimes people say I have a very pessimistic outlook with society as a whole when it comes to expectations. And I'm like, no, it's not really that. It's just like, hey, I, I would like to see great things happen within society, but look at what the world is doing. So that's kind of where that song goes. Tend to all my faults, I'm learning. It's okay to fall. It's okay to fall. Claim he had a knife to flash and lights, but look the night and now the fight for justice, man. Oh, so many tears, and it's still above the law, been for so many years. See the problem so much greater than a couple of folks. It's a system and a virus that allows him to choke a man to death over minor charges, something so small. When you call it out, it's like you're yelling straight at a wall. Cause their ears are closed and they carry no soul. Making talking points and statements that allows them to troll while they ignore. The next song is July 11th, and of course, you know, the obvious, this is a song that I wrote um, in memory of my father. Now, I'll say this, he already got a song on the first album, but as I listened to it, I was like, I like it, but I think I, I want to do, I want to go in a different direction, and I think I want to tell a different story, and I want to tell a story of like, what it is he did while he was here. The song Pops is more so about me reacting after he's gone. July 11th is talking about me missing him being, on, being gone, but it's, it's more so about appreciating everything that happened beforehand. And so that was a really hard one to record. Like I did the music and the music was inspired by like tweets, um, smoking cigarettes. And I had just been listening to a lot of smooth jazz and classical anyway. And so I just wanted like a really easy song that kind of gives me the vibe of like when I'm sitting out on like the, the, the lake fishing. Because I remember um, when my father and I would go fishing, he always would whistle all the time. As a teenager, got on my nerves. I used to come with my little headphones and tune right out. But, you know, he'd always whistle because, you know, fishing is a very patient, you know, thing to do. Like, you sit out there for hours and you become one with nature. And so, when we would go fishing, he was always just really tranquil and just, he would whistle and everything was smooth. So, I was like, I want a song that captures that essence. A song that's just so, just smooth and it gives you that essence like everything's gonna be all right. And it's funny because it really doesn't match any other song on the album. Like it just, it's so different, especially when you compare it to the first half of the album. And so, you know, I wrote the song and I, I wrote and, and recorded that song in one day. Like it just all came together perfectly. And it's the only song that was hard to sing because I got emotional like recording the hook. I don't know if you can really hear it, but um, no, it wasn't the hook. It was the second verse. I got emotional recording the second hook. So like at the very, very end of the, I'm sorry, second hook, second verse, when you hear me saying the line about like playing the voice notes to still hear how you sound, I was like, my voice was like not cracking, but you know how your voice shakes when you're like water, you're teary eyed. Like that's kind of what was going on. I was like, huh? Eh, well, I'll keep it in there. It makes it more genuine. Um, that was a really fun song to record. So it's inspired by like Kurt Franklin's Imagine Me and Tweets, um, smoking cigarettes as far as the musical arrangements. And I, I just really like the song. And again, I think it'll be another song that has a, a longer shelf life on the album because, you know, it's all instruments it's guitar it's harps it's strings it's just very simple and then like that's me whistling in the background like so there's like some whistling um i just i don't know it's a really special song i really really liked it which is why it was the first song i decided to share from the album for those who follow me on youtube like it was the very first one i went to do a visual for and j of course july 11th is the day that he passed and so i really enjoy that song it has a special place in my heart um it's just a really great song i love the melody um, and a lot of people connected with it. And it's also one that gets a lot of traction, so I'm glad people are enjoying it. Driving through the mountains, racing the road in every state. Coaching my teams, you love the pilot, meant to correct all my mistakes. And with age, you were enchanted. Graduated and made you proud. But I sometimes play your voicemail Just to remember how you sound So now it's 
Destiny is a really special song because it brings the album back up. You know, we just were in a really downward spiral in the previous two songs. Like I said, the album tells the story of my life from a young adult into the present. So in the beginning, I'm young and whimsical and I'm having a ball and bright eyed and I'm invincible. I'm on top of the world. And then life happens and you get into situationships that turn into relationships that end. And then you feel down and out and life is tough. And then my father passes away and I'm like, man, what's going on? I don't know what's next. And so tenacity represents where I was around the time I was maybe about maybe about two years after my father passed. That's what tenacity represents. And it's a song that pretty much says, okay, yeah, you were down and life wasn't great, but what's next? You can't stay down there forever. You gotta move on. Or not even move on, but you gotta learn how to process how you feel and use those feelings to help build you up to go into your next phase of life. And so that's what tenacity is about. And it's inspired by a bunch of sounds. Like the Banshaw Day is one of my favorites. And I always enjoyed the song, Nothing Can Come Between Us. And so it's kind of inspired by that song. What I loved about that song was there was like this bass line riff that just repeats in the song, but it's catchy. And so I was like, I want to kind of have something similar. So in Tenacity, you hear like a boom, 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 that just keeps going over. A dun, 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 a boom, dun, dun. It just keeps going and going and going. And then I built an entire song around that as far as like with the music and everything. And again, I wanted some live instruments. Like pretty much most of the songs towards the end of the album are a lot of live instruments in comparison to everything being programmed. And so, you know, it's a very like, it's just, it's smooth, it has a vibe, but it's warm. And it's inspired not just by Sade, but it's also inspired by Tony Braxton. Tony Braxton, one of my favorite Tony Braxton songs was Why Should I Care? And so when you're listening to the verses, the melody that you hear in the second half of the verses is inspired by what Tony did on Why Should I Care? Because I always said Babyface always had a great way of doing arrangements with the song. And then when you get to the bridge of the song, and there's a lot of Janet inspirations in this album, but it's inspired by Janet Jackson's Island Life, which was my favorite song off the Demi Joe album. And so, you know, I kind of capture the essence of that song and pay a little homage to Janet on that. And so it's just a really, really fun song. Um, I love the vocal arrangements and how I did the vocals. I like how I sing the verses. And I, it's just, you know, there's layers to even just the vocals. Because like I said, what I've learned as you, you do albums is you want to give a little bit of everything vocally. You don't want to give too much of the same thing or not enough of something. So there's a bit of everything on the album where there's some songs where I'm, there's the light feathered vocals. There's some where I'm singing out of my chest. There's some where it's me singing in falsetto. There's some where I'm using like a really airy pocket. There's some where I'm pretty much singing in a monotone key or singing extremely low. I just wanted to give a little bit of everything. So Tenacity is one of those songs that kind of does a little bit of everything. So Tenacity is one where I'm doing a little bit of everything. Um, Do For Love is one. Heat the Flame is kind of one that goes into a bunch of different places. Um, and Tenacity, I think, it is one where I just kind of try to give a little bit of everything. So the, the hook is very soft and, and it's presented in a very feathery type way, but then the verses are singing a little bit stronger. And then the ad libs, of course. So I really enjoy the song Tenacity. It's, it's a gem to me. It's one of my favorites on the album. Frequency is a really special song to me because it has roots to when I was like 14 years old. So true story, back in the day I used to have this Casio keyboard and the keyboard would allow you to record songs on six tracks but it only had a little bit of data so you can make these songs that might have been about a minute and ten seconds long and then you ran out of data. And so I had this song that I wrote, just the chords though, and the chords were kind of like this little doom, doom, doom. Doom, do, do, doom, doom, doom. And then that got inspired because I was randomly watching Fresh Prince and it was the episode where, where Jazz had married, um, I forgot the girl's name, but when they got married, they walked into the float of the float, float. And so <laughs> I had those chords in my head and so that's what inspired that song when I was 14. And then fast forward to today, I was like, well, I just had those chords in my head again. I don't even remember where it came from, but I was like, hey, I did make a song with those chords. And so I had these chords and I recorded, 
And God, I wish I could play you guys a tape of like the original. Cause like when I would record these songs in my little Casio, I'd get my little tape player and put it in front of the Casio just to record it. And I had all these songs that I used to compose just sitting on a bunch of tapes. I can't find them, but when I do, I would gladly share it. But anyway, so I started recording Frequency in April of 2018. And all I had was the music. And at the time, I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with it. All I had was doom, doom, doom. Doom, doo, 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 doo. And I was like, I gotta do more though. Like, I was like, I like the chords, but right now this song ain't about to make the album. We gotta spice it up or something. And so I just randomly happened to be cleaning the house one random Saturday. And of course, my little music playlist was on. And then UCB Sexy Lady came on. And you know, if you're somebody that knows like go go music, it has a little dum 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 dum. I was like, hmm. And then of course, I always felt that that was inspired by the systems don't disturb this groove, which still has that exact same little dum 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 dum. I was like, hmm. And so I was like, actually, that could kind of complement those chords. So then it went from you know what I had, and then it went to like a dum 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 dum. Dun, dun. And then I was like, oh wait, I got a rhythm now. Dun, dun, dun. And so I built that and then I started adding all these different extra instruments and I started adding flutes and, you know, chimes, just, you know, all kind of extra instruments and, and brass instruments and it just, I had this really great track that just sounded so lively and I built an intro and an opening with like a bunch of guitar riffs and percussion and just I wanted it to sound like if this was a concert it was the opening track before the, the concert really just cranked off or, or it kicked off and so I had this really great track and then the song is just about you know you meet somebody and you just have this great frequency where you just vibe and you guys are just you're so like glued together and everything just works that when you guys get together, you don't even have a sense of time. Everything just flows together. You're just in this great space. And that's symbolic of just some of the women I met later in life as I got older, um, as far as like dating and stuff. And so like, it's just a really great track. I think vocally it's my favorite song. Um, Cause I really was like, okay, I'm gonna sing out on this one. Let's, let's, let's sing from the diaphragm on here a little bit. And so, you know, it's a really, really smooth song, and it has three phases. So it's the, the initial song with the dum 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 dum, and it does all of that, and it has the hook and everything. And I love the hook. The hook is a really fun hook that I did as well. Um, it's just all that is. Just, it's such a smooth vibe. It's so good. I love it. And so then the bridge, I was like, okay, now let's bring it down. And I, I made a drastic change in the bridge mainly because there's so much going on in the music. Like I said earlier, again, my goal was I want the music to tell its own story even if there's no words or melody to, accomp to accompany it. And so with the music, because it was so big and, and loud and just boastful, I was like, I want the bridge to come way down and I want to smooth it out. And so then you see the bridge just really smooth out. And you just hear like flutes and whistles and a few chimes here and there. And so, you know, then there's the bridge. And then of course, more inspiration, my favorite, 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 favorite Janet Jackson song has always been 24 Play. And so I was like, let's pay some homage to 24 Play. So then there's hints of 24 Play in the, the section after the bridge. And then at the very end, when the song ends, I did some homage to like P-Funk or G-Funk, like the whole like Parliament of Funkadelic sound. And it was so funny because literally as I was recording my version, I, I heard Anderson Pack's album and he has a song called Anywhere. And I was like, this literally sounds like what I just created. Like, wow. We really got the same year for real. Like, I, and Anderson Pack is one of my favorite artists, so I was like, okay, wow, that it's kind of cool. And so, Frequency is a song. It's the longest song on the album. It, and, and the goal, I was like, you know what? Let's do it like how they used to do way back when, when you just let a song ride out until it was, in, until its job was done. And so that's one of the cool things about when you're like not signed to a label or anything, you can literally do what you want creatively. You don't have somebody saying, oh, you can't do that, you can't do that. Uh, that's not gonna work on radio, that's not gonna do anything. You literally get to build whatever you want, which is what I love about being in a capacity to do my own thing. Like when you build your own studio and you have no oversight, you get to do what you want musically. Um, and you just let the creativity flow. So I think Fre Frequency came out of just a space of creativity. I absolutely love that song. Really special song. What can I say? I wasn't right the way only to you. Straight from my heart, they still you're. They feel love your mind. Can we hit the chase to your favorite place in baby? So 
It's actually an interlude, but for some reason it just didn't say that on the track listing, but it's actually an interlude. And it's actually one of two songs that actually made it out of the very, very, very first session that we started, or that I started with in like January of 2018. Um, it was the one of the two tracks that actually made it out. Um, I knew I wasn't going to make it a full song because again, the album was a little too long. I was like, but I, I, I really like this track because it's different. Um, production wise it sounds really different from everything else on the album so I was like I have to keep it in here and really who I was inspired by on that was kind of just like Maxwell I always like how Maxwell can have a really smooth track and so at the time I think he had his song 1990X was out and I always liked how that how that song just flowed it was one of my favorites so I was like okay I want to have a song that kind of has that same kind of essence um, and I wanted to just sound different and so you know, it's weird because it's like a slow jam, but I'm beatboxing on it. <laughs> and, you know, the, the instrumentation is very different. So I, I, it's one of the few songs where I'm singing in like a monotone key in the beginning. I don't like singing in monotone for too long. I get bored with it. And so I open the song with that and then, you know, it goes into a falsetto and then it just does this little piece here and there. <laughs> Um, it's one of the songs that I wrote for the idea of life after 11 p.m. And it's so funny because I remember recording it. I was like, man, I hope my mom don't hear this one. Like, oh, let me make sure to tell her to skip that one. Even though I'm not even saying too much in it, but it, it, it's funny. I just felt like, you know, it's pretty much it's about just the idea of love making, The idea of like when you connect physically with somebody and how you, you just vibe and you both find your pocket and everything just flows. And, and you know, there's, there's a line in there like, um, you know, uh, flying as we race the stars, now all we see is gold. Like that's pretty much, you know, signs of love making. Like it's just, you know, it happens and you're in this space where everything is just, wow. <laughs> you know? So that's what the song is about. And it's not even that long. It's only like, I don't, I don't even think it's two minutes. So it's like an interlude, but it's not an interlude. It's a really long interlude but it's not a song, you know? And so I thought it was a perfect way to segue into the last portion of the album where I was like, okay, let's be honest. I'm like 30 years old, so we can sing about the grown people stuff. Everything doesn't have to be too safe, you know what I mean? And so it's a perfect segue into the next song, which is Can I Come Through? Can I Come Through is a really, really smooth song as well. It was the third to the last song that was added to the album. Um, it's a song where it's pretty much self-explanatory. It's, I don't know, it's late, you're chilling, hey, what you up to? Can I Come Through? <laughs> you know, and so I just, I wanted to get a song where, you know, it, it's smoother. Like, the thing about the album is because it was so front-loaded with up temples, I was like, I have to really make sure I balance it out in the second half of the album we make sure that there's also some layers and some depth to the album as far as like the production and the sounds and so Can I Come Through is just really really smooth it's a really smooth song it's a song you can play in like your quiet storm hours it's a song you can play like if you're doing like some work and, and it's interesting because it's technically an up tempo but because of how I arrange the chords it feels like it's a slow jam and pretty much that was inspired by Ralph Tresvant's sensitivity like sensitivity if you think about it is a new jack swing song but because of how they arrange the chords you feel it more as a slow group but it's the same bpm as a lot of the new jack swing songs that are out at the time and so that's pretty much the same thing i thought of as i did can i come through and the idea for the music initially i was listening to the radio and tamia's um leave it smoking came on i was like this is kind of nice like it's nice because it's like up tempo but it's smooth and so I, that's pretty much what inspired can i come through and i was just like okay 
you know, and I was like, I want it to be just really, really just chill. I want it to be really vibey. Um, even vocally, I'm gonna really do a really light feathered vocal on this because I don't want to do too much. Like on this one, I don't think you really need to sing too heavy or sing too hard. So let's just make it very soft and let the vocals almost blend into the music. It's a parade. I go the extra mile for you. Let me serenade. Tell me if you want me. Where it's almost like it's really meditative almost. Like you ever put on like those Tibetan singing bowls with the like same kind of vibe. And so that's Can I Come Through. I love the production on it. And it's also one of the more simpler songs I, I produced where I didn't do a whole lot. I, Cause I also, I know that sometimes I can get so creatively excited that I will add so much to a song and the song is so big and I was like, the whole album can't be big because then it becomes too much, too much of the same thing. So what are some, you know, what are some things we can do to wind down the album, but also still make it flow and still complement everything else and still be good. And I was like, okay, we need a few songs that, you know, that, that bring everything down, but they still have the punch. And Can I Come Through is one of those songs. It's actually, in my opinion, one of the stronger songs on the album. And again, it's a song that really has a lot of popularity within just when I look at the numbers. So I'm appreciative that people are enjoying that song as well. Um, it's actually one of the songs I'm, I've been pushing to promote the album with. Um, and so I love that people are enjoying it. And I just think it's very different from some of the other songs in the album. I think what I like about the latter half of the album is that each song is so unexpected. July 11th is very unexpected if you just finished listening to something like Black Plight. Same thing with Jaded View, Jaded Blue. Same thing with Tenacity. Um, same thing with Frequency, The Way It Goes, even The Affirmation, all of those songs are very, very different and give you something different. And so that's what I like about Can I Come Through. Touch your special You bring a kind of magic to my life You're so special Dance into the night Hold your body tight so you hit the phone, I check your text, I ring the bell, I sweep the room. That's how we do. That's how we, that's how we do. That's how we do. Everything is a unique song because it's the only other song that made it out of the initial session that I talked about when I started recording in January and through March of 2018. Like, if I would have stuck with the sound that I initially had at the very, very beginning, that's how most of the album would have sounded. It would have had a very everything and the way it goes kind of vibe. And I was like, you gotta kind of, everything can't be this, this slow. You gotta have some crankage in there a little bit. But everything was the other track that I thought was strong enough to still be on the album. And it's also the most simple song as far as production. It's literally recorded on five tracks. There's the drums that I created. There's like this kind of mallet flute sound I had. There's some strings, there's a bass line, and there's some chimes that I put at the end of the song. That was it. And the goal was, I wanted the listener to really just listen to the story and, and, and listen to how the song was delivered. Um, and the song is pretty much about a situation, which, true story, like I said, it's a story about my life. Um, it's a situation where pretty much I had a lady friend who was in this really jacked up kind of relationship and pretty much because of the appreciation that she had for me as a friend, it kind of led into a space where it, the two of us end up kind of like talking. And so that's what that song is about. And I really enjoyed recording that song because it was just so laid back. It was the easiest song to record because I wasn't having to sing against so many <laughs> instruments. Like, I'm not gonna lie, recording some of those up temples as fun as they were, you know, you're in the studio trying to record and you're trying to hit your little note and then in the back there's a cymbal. <laughs> Oh, oh. So like <laughs> when I recorded half the up tempos, I had to mute most of the tracks and just sing with the bass line and maybe a few chords so I didn't get like lost in the production because I mean some of those songs, especially like Heat the Flame, um, you know, the production was just big. But with these songs, like with everything, it was such a smooth song. It was such an easy song to record. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it and I'm so dramatic like I remember I recorded it I had like candles and had the lights dim I was like I gotta be in the zone while I record this one 
She tried, she tried to save it. A failure to conceive, he agreed, oh baby. But she's not trying to hear it. He played this game. Yeah. Cause in the morning when she wakes up, oh, and he won't be there between the sheets. He's so and so it's a really fun song. It's not even really a fun song. I, I just really like the song. I love the vocal delivery. And I challenge myself to really like sing out a little bit more, especially on the end with the bridge and, 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 and trying to bring it home with a climax. I think it's one of the few songs that has a climax vocally on it. And so um, I really enjoy everything. It's a really, really great song. There's going to be another one that I push later down the line as well. Um, and, I, and I think it was like the perfect closure to the album. What you gonna do to get so rough? What you gonna do when you had too much? What you gonna do when it's not enough? What you gonna do? What you gonna do when you hurt your own lies? And you got what your own lies? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? She's crying. And so after I finished everything, I knew that I was done with the album, but little old me and Mr. Creativity was like, ah, I got the itch one more time. Let me add one more track. And so that's how the hardcover outro became the last song on the album. And so what I wanted to do was I still had all these other ideas that I had. And I was like, you know what? I'm probably not making a third album anytime soon. And, but I have all these things that I want to do. So literally, I just started playing and recording whatever it was I played. And so that's why the song, musically, it has like six or seven different switches um, musically. Like it's a song that just keeps changing production-wise. It goes from one place where first it starts with, with like a doom, 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 And then it goes into kind of like a Motown 1969 production vibe. And then it switches from that to kind of like a house world music vibe. Then it goes way down to almost like a Drake kind of those low vibey rap songs he has. And then it picks back up and then it picks up some more. And then it just, it goes into, and then it goes into almost like a song that reminds you of like um, the song White Lines from the 80s. And then like, it just goes in all these different places. But the hardcover pretty much is, it's the closure of the album. The song is about recognizing that you have things you want to do for yourself you you recognize who you are and you know that you have all these gifts and you're going on a journey so now you just have to go and make it happen and you have to kind of not fall into the the the, the hardships and the holes that are going to be along the way and so I love the song because it goes into so many directions and it's a song where I'm rapping, I'm singing, there's, there's moments where it's just the music playing and I let the music carry the song. It's a really, really fun song and I think it was the perfect way to close the album and I think it's a perfect complement to the opening of the song. So you have the opening structure chaos where it's a song that's structured but it's chaotic and it represents where I was when I was like 20 years old just all over the place just trying to find my footing and then you fast forward to the very end of the album and the hardcover outro represents where I am today where it's like I've lived a little bit I've seen some things I've tried I've failed I've cried I've laughed and been through everything but you know what I'm still here and on top of that like Guess what? Like all that did was just build me up to do more. And so I appreciate like that song because it's like the perfect closing, which is why there's the line where it's like, you know, now that you've heard the heart, now that you've heard the hard cover, do you have a deeper glimpse into me? Like, cause I feel like I've given you my all in the album. Now you take it down, take it for a trip. Hey, you better not slip. If you do, better tighten up the grip. Life takes you down the road with no lines. Why see you on coming traffic? Cause they'll hit you by surprise. Look up. Pay attention when your eyes can't see that the soul tries to win you, that the past repeats. When your soul tries to win you, that the past repeats. When your soul tries to win you, that the past repeats. Uh, wait, can we bring it You beat, make it far, but maybe don't second guess yourself. Lessons come with moments from before. 
Like I worked so hard on it. Like y'all knew. Like it, it, I did not plan to take a year and almost like, almost a year and a half to make the album. It just was something that you know I just knew I wasn't gonna put it out till it was right. My biggest hope is that people just connect with it and and that people just actually listen to it. And I think with the album, there's so much that's hidden within the album as far as the production and there's just so many different things. Like one of the things I love about music or just production is that. You know, when you go and you listen to songs, sometimes you always hear something different every time you listen to it. And that, that's kind of the goal I hope that some people can find as they listen to the project. I put a lot of time into the production. I put a lot of effort into the lyrics. I put a lot of effort into the vocal arrangements. Um, there's just so many things that I put a lot of effort into. So I hope that as people listen to it, they have the same appreciation for it that I do. I'll definitely say that um, one of the things that I had to learn to do as I did this album has become, like I said, a fan of my own work and have trust or have the trust that I can be able to pull off anything I wanted to do. Like as much as I love my first album, I see a lot of growth with this one and I was just more confident. Like I knew what I was going for or, or I thought I knew what I was going for. And then when I thought I was there, I was like, no, I'm not there. So we're going to go and try again. And we're going to try again. And we're going to try again. And so I think this album serves as a year and a half of some blood, sweat, and tears. Because listen, it's hard to record an album when you got a nine to five. Like, pretty much all of these songs, most of the time when I was doing recording, a lot of my recordings would be after 11 p.m. Because sometimes I might have done a YouTube video before I did some music, just because I'm trying to like keep my priorities together. And um, you know, it's hard to record sometimes when you work with children and you've been projecting your voice for eight hours, and then you got to come home and you're supposed to sing this nice feathery falsetto, but your falsetto is dry because you've been cussing kids out all day and so um well not literally cussing them out but you know that's that so i'm really proud of this album not sure what's next we'll find out we'll see but for now this is where i'm at um and right now this is the heart cover so thank you guys for watching again my name is calvin michaels and you just saw the behind the scenes of the heart cover album